lockdown and the decisions leading to the end of lockdown and the factors affecting that. My name's Mike Cashman, always pleased if you buy my satirical political books, but I'm not here to talk about that, I'm talking about lockdown. What does the end of lockdown mean? Does it mean that COVID-19 has been eradicated? No, it doesn't. I saw the eradication of Ebola in Sierra Leone. That really was eradication. This is not that. What does the end of lockdown mean? It means that they have got room for you in intensive care. Are the fears of coronavirus completely over? No, the vaccine with a double dose is on average 94% effective um, for the uh, people who've been double dosed. And even if we add on the people who've been single dosed, we have 40 million vaccinated people, uh, probably slightly more um, by the time that we get to uh, July the 19th, a couple of million more at least. Um, but that still means that there's in excess of 2.4 million people who could get COVID uh, and potentially 10,000 deaths resulting from that. Now, I suspect uh, that the reality may be worse than that if there are further variants, um, but let us not imagine that we are free from the risk of COVID, uh, even if we've been double vaccinated. Let's make good decisions. Uh, it's easy to think that the government is making all the decisions for us after it's go to work, don't go to work, go and eat out, don't go and eat out, go to the pub, come back by 10, uh, don't go to this place. Uh, you can go there um, and come back with isolating. No, you need to isolate. So, so we've had all these instructions. It's easy to forget that we've got individual choices as well as to... Uh, where we work, how many people we mix with, whether we wear masks or not, what precautions we take. So I'm not making a big argument for extending lockdown. I can see the value of the um, uh, vaccination programme uh, and the extent to which protection has been provided. Those statistics I gave at the start would be much worse if we were not talking about vaccinated people. But how did we get here? Now, just thinking back to how the, you know, the number of people that were admitted to this country in April. I just want to look back at that with the information we had at the time. I don't accept the criticism of hindsight. You know, this is a sort of general purpose government response at the moment. You're talking about the past. Oh, well, you're just applying hindsight. You're talking about the present. Uh, well, you should support us. You're talking about the future. Well, it's too early to say. So they've got a ready made answer to everything. But, as I say, looking at decisions at the start of April with the information that was available at the time. Now, Boris Johnson often says, I want to level with you folks. Supposing he had levelled with us then. Supposing he had shared the factors affecting decision making at that point. So I suppose it would have gone something like this. Well, now, folks, I want to level with you because there's a decision coming up. Um, we know that we're going to restrict travel from Pakistan and Bangladesh uh, and uh, India's results are between the two. But here's the thing. I'm planning in a couple of weeks time, uh, two or three weeks time, to go on a trip to see Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India. And it'd be a great photo opportunity because, you know, I will waffle about the possibility of a future trade deal with India, whereby uh, we could sell more products to India and they would sell to us and uh, we'd have to provide loads of visas, visas to Indian people. But perhaps I won't talk too much about that because some of my supporters might not be positive about that. But anyway, I've got the possibility of this trip. It'd be a great photo opportunity, uh, super for headlines, post-Brexit Britain, uh, uh, making deals with our friends from all over the world, um, but can't really do it if we put India on the red list, because then, you know, I would have to come back and isolate in a hotel for two weeks. Uh, and if I didn't do that, you'd have these people saying it's one rule for them and one rule for us. So that wouldn't look good. So what I'd like to do is keep the travel options open to India um, just for a further two or three weeks. Uh, you know, just until my trip's over. 
Um, but it is a balance because uh, they've been having uh, enormous numbers of cases in India. Anybody who's watched the news over the, the last few weeks can see that. So, you know, there could be thousands of people. Well, there would be thousands of people coming in from India and there would be a risk of spreading a lot of further cases in the UK. Um, but, you know, maybe we could cope with that for, for just three or four weeks or so um, in order to get my trip in and then we could put India onto the red list. So what do you think? Um, it's a question of headlines for post-Brexit trade trip versus the health of the nation. Health or headlines? I think you'll support me in order to help me get those headlines. I'm sure that will be your decision. So that's what he could have said to us uh, at the beginning of April if he was going to level with us, but he didn't. The decision was just taken uh, and there have been various attempts uh, with uh, varying hindsight statistics attempting to explain it subsequently, um, but the decision is ridiculous. Um, and yeah, we know that he was planning a trade trip. It wouldn't have achieved very much. Um, you know, the uh, it was still possible to talk on Zoom, but there's no headlines emerged from any uh, discussion on Zoom. Nothing significant that uh, that I can see. Um, and it wasn't going to be very substantive anyway. But it would have created the photo opportunities that the prime minister craves. So, anyway, I'm making an assumption about what we'd prefer. But what would you say, given that choice? Health or headlines? Which do you think is more important? Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and tell your friends if you found it useful. Thank you.